So I'm Paul Dorman. I'm one of the maintainers of OSM to PG SQL. I'm here to talk about the OSM to PG SQL Flex backend. So OSM to PG SQL is the standard loader uh, for OpenStreetMap data into PostGIS. It powers most of the map styles on OSM.org and many map styles. It also is used for the nominatum geocoder as well as being widely used for QA analysis. Basically anything where you want to take OSM data and do, get standard geometries out of it. It can work with anything from extracts to the whole planet, and it, it can also consume minutely updates. So you, you can have at home quite easily a uh, database of the entire planet, which is within a minute of the data on OSM.org. And that's the technology used for the tiles on OSM.org. So this is a lightning talk. So briefly, there's a, a part of OSM to be GSQL called the middle, which is where temporary data is stored. Um, and it's an internal implementation detail. Um, it's actually changing fairly soon to improve some things. And most of the SQL can deal with the planet, but it needs enough memory to do it. I mean, you're dealing with outputting a couple hundred gigs of data. You aren't going to do that on a machine with one gig of RAM, or at least not if you care about completing it any, <laughs> in a reasonable amount of time. The manual's got sizing information, but it, it works. I mean, you can if you've got a small machine, you can deal with a small amount of data easily. So OSM to PG SQL has different backends, so different outputs to it. Um, they're all, they're all Postgres based. The first one and the oldest is the PG SQL backend. This has been around for since 2007. Um, and it, ha it has code either C transforms or code the user supplies, which tells you how to go from OSM tagging to the tables. Um, it is going to be deprecated at some point in the future. There isn't a date set out for that. There's the gazetteer output. This has been deprecated. It's, it's used by Nominat. It was used by Nominatum, but it's been replaced by the flex backend for Nominatum. Uh, it's still in the code, but it will be removed at some point. There's the multi backend, which was done about 2014, and this was a way to get multiple tables. But the way it was architected, it was re really relying on the, the API for the PG SQL backend. So it wasn't the easiest to write, um, the to, you, to use it. It's, and it's been removed because we now have the Flex backend, which allows the user to define what tables and the schema that they're outputting to. So if you've got the, the PG SQL API, and you've got a file that defines all of your columns, and then you have either, you have a, supply a Lewis script that tells you how to go from OSM tags to the columns and if, if it should appear in certain tables. So you supply these functions in your code to OSM to PG SQL, and it will go ahead and close process the planet. The problem was that uh, these don't really extend to arbitrary tables. So we came up with a new API, which um, allow, which for each object, a function gets called, and you can then within that function tell, call back to a central PG SQL to tell it to put an object in a table. There's good documentation on this, so I'm not gonna go in detail over it, but uh, your code interprets what the OSM object represents and where it should go. So for a simple example here, this is just a couple of tables, one for trees and one for rest ones. So you've got, you define your tables and then you have code that for each node, if it's a restaurant, add it to the restaurant table. If it's a tree, add it to the trees table. A real world example of this is gonna to have to deal with stuff like restaurants, could be mapped as nodes, ways, or relations, and you probably care about a lot more than just restaurants and trees. 
but there's also a lot more advanced things you can do with the flex backend. So you can do relations, so you can handle multi polygons, but you can also handle root relations, river relations. Uh, you can um, you can get you can have tables that are without geometry for membership information. Like well, I'm I'm doing this with uh, with the stream map Carta, where you have a table for admin boundary stuff and, and a table for route membership. With, which you can then join against the geometry tables because these are many to many relationships because it's particularly in the US, a single road might be part of many different highway networks, which is a headache. But <laughs> uh, the, then there's phase two processing, which allows you to get on the information for away stuff from the relations. The relations have to be processed later because they come at the end of the file. So this allows you to go to go back and revisit ways. There's a bunch of new stuff with geometry. So you can do stuff like converting polygons to points, merging lines, splitting lines, other common things that you need if you're going to render a map. And brand new is also expire more advanced expiring. So if you're running OSM to PG SQL, it will tell you what tiles have changed if, it's, if you're going to be rendering a web map because you have to pass that to your renderer to tell it the tiles have changed and it needs to re-render them. It can now do this in a more sophisticated manner, looking at something has changed in this table, so it needs to change in these ways. Something has changed in this table, it needs to change in these other ways. And then merging that, which the goal of all of that is to minimize how much you have to re-render, of course, because re-rendering takes CPU time and money. There's also a new feature called generalization. This also works with the flex. It's allowing for simplification of geometries, typically for lower zooms. So it can do stuff like derive built up areas. This is a very, this is traditionally a tricky thing to do is to get built up area polygons out of OpenStreetMap data. Uh, I can do discrete isolation. So if you have mountain peaks, finding the most prominent mountain peaks in an area so that you you only see the big peaks, not all of the little peaks that might be just a few yards away from the main peak. Uh, this can also work with cities where the so you want approximately a uniform density of cities displaying on your map, but the world doesn't have a uniform density of cities or a, a global criteria by which to rank it by. So it looks at their relative importance. And then there's various strategies for merging polygons. So if you have a land use layer or a forest layer, you probably want to merge those polygons together. Um, and there's a strategy that does a raster based merging, which is quite performant to allow you to do that generalization and have the simplified polygons and join adjacent polygons. And that's my talk. Uh,